Where would you go to be alone? Is home too noisy with those birds? The desert's quiet, but you need to look out for rattlesnakes. How about going to outer space where you are the only organism? What if I told you we are not alone, even in space? We carry with us fellow travelers that are trillions of microbes making up our microbiome. These microorganisms include bacteria, fungi, viruses, and protozoans, and they take up residence on our skin, within our mouths and our guts, and these trillions form cities that rival any of ours in terms of diversity and sheer numbers, all at the microscopic scale. We know this because scientists fingerprint the microbiota in our guts using DNA technology. And they show that the microbiota change as we change. The colors represent bacteria on these pie charts. And we see they change as we age. They're different if we're healthy or malnourished or if we've taken antibiotics. Our relationship is symbiotic. Not unlike the microbes that live in termite guts, those help them eat wood. And that of the sea anemone and the clownfish where the clownfish has adapted to use the anemone as a place of shelter. We have also evolved to live with our microbiota. A mother's breast milk contains sugars to feed the infant and sugars that only the bacteria within the infant's gut can digest. And in this way, we set the stage for a good microbiota right at birth. Our gut microbiota are the most well characterized. We know they shape us. They make vitamins for us. They feed or bribe our immune cells. They cultivate longer intestines in us. They exclude troublesome microbes, and they even whisper food cravings to our brains. The result of this is good health and longevity. This man was 101, and he's posing next to his mother in a Bulgarian mountain village. The scientists of the day attributed their longevity to the fact that they drank fermented milk that contained lactobacilli and other helpful microbes. Present day scientists are investigating whether microbiota are a key to our health and when they become unbalanced, whether they cause diseases such as obesity. These mice differ only in the microbes within. Other diseases such as allergy and arthritis are associated with unbalanced microbiota. And the question now is do unbalanced microbiota cause the disease or is it the reverse? What is clear is that we should consider these microbes to be part of us, a superorganism of made up of both self and microbial cells. Consider if we could shape our microbiota to shape our health. We already unintentionally alter our microbiota. Modern living and over cleanliness removes microbiota that we need to train our immune systems. And the overuse of antibiotics in medicines and foods also removes microbiota and affects the balance. Doctors are realizing that microbiome therapies can restore the balance. Fecal transplants, that's a fancy word for poop pills, can cure devastating infections with Clostridium difficile. Scientists want to learn more about how microbiome therapies work. And a recent search of NIH's current clinical trials shows that microbiome therapies are being applied to many conditions. An exciting paradigm shift is that scientists are considering that microbiota change the way that many drugs work. Cancer drugs are affected by microbiota. Some require microbiota in order to trigger the exact T cells that are needed to kill the cancer cells. Restoring our microbiota can be simple. It can be as simple as visiting a farm or eating dirt, if you will. And family physicians are starting to tell patients to cultivate microbiota, to avoid unnecessary antibiotics or take probiotic supplements, to eat fiber, and even to play outdoors. I hope that you will take this newfound awareness of your microbiome to care for it, to nurture it not only within your own body, but also within your world. The field of microbiome research is an exciting one, full of potential and applications to make your life better and maybe to make you live to be 101. If you would like to hear more useful information about your microbiota, please tune into my series on what's the big deal about tiny microbes.